We're going to shift our focus back to the Israel-Hamas war and the U.S. response. For perspective from the Biden White House, we're joined by John Kirby, the coordinator for strategic communications at the National Security Council. Sir, welcome back to the News Hour. Thanks for having me. Good to be with you. Israel's military, as you well know, announced an expansion of ground operations in the Gaza Strip tonight. We have reports of tanks and troops on the ground. Gaza has been plunged into darkness. I know you're limited in terms of what you can say about Israel's military operation, but is the administration confident that Israel has considered the full range of repercussions of a stepped-up ground assault? Well, we're certainly confident that we've had the ability to share our perspectives in urban warfare and combat of this kind of sort. Uh, we've had more than ample opportunity to, uh, to, to talk to them about our lessons learned. Um, and they'll have to speak for their decisions, obviously, and what they're doing or what they will do. Uh, but we're going to stay in close touch with them. And the other thing we're going to do is, is keep making sure that they've got the tools, the weapons, the capabilities uh, to be successful in this fight against Hamas. You have said the U.S. welcomes a pause in the war to allow more time to get humanitarian aid in and hostages out. There are, of course, American hostages being held by Hamas right now. What's the potential impact of this latest offensive on the effort to get those hostages released? I think that remains to be seen. Uh, I'll let, again, I'll let the uh, Israelis speak for their military operations, but it, what, what impact it might have on the ability to get hostages out, um, I think we're just, it's just too soon to know here uh, as things begin to unfold. We still stand by our strong desire to see all those hostages released, and Hamas should do it immediately. And short of that, uh, we got to continue to work on uh, negotiations to try to, to try to see that outcome. Uh, and we're doing that. We're doing that with our partners in Israel and throughout the region. Uh, we still think that that's a, a task worth, worth pursuing. And if that requires some sort of humanitarian pause or pauses, then we're obviously in support of that as well. But does it undermine the chances of a humanitarian pause? Again, I think it really remains to be seen uh, uh, what, what happens on the ground there and, and what operations they conduct and how they conduct it. Uh, and again, I just don't want to get ahead of, of where we are or where they are in their execution of their plans. Let's talk about the situation in Gaza, because the U.N. Secretary General today said in a statement that the humanitarian system in Gaza is facing a total collapse. That's a direct quote. He said about 500 trucks were getting into Gaza before the Hamas attack on Israel. About 12 trucks per day have entered since these hostilities started. What kind of pressure is the U.S. applying to make sure that this process happens more quickly, which President Biden has said is a priority of his? As much pressure as we can bring to bear, we're doing that, as well as as much engagement uh, as we can do. We've, we've got uh, Ambassador Satterfield, our special envoy for humanitarian affairs on the ground, uh, working with regional partners, working with aid organizations to get that aid accelerated and to get it increased. We know. I think, you know, we've had 84 trucks total go in since the, since the conflict started. That's, that's a trickle. That's not enough. Uh, we've got to get more in. You've heard the president talk about that, and we're working it very aggressively. Why not make U.S. military aid to Israel conditional, then, as some analysts have suggested, uh, conditions on pausing the bombing campaign to allow time to get hostages out and more humanitarian aid in, if that is a priority of the administration? Well, that, that question almost presumes that the Israelis don't care about the hostages either, and they do, because uh, so many of them are Israelis. They want, their, they want their citizens back. They understand that. They share our concerns about that. Again, I think it's just too soon to know, uh, too, soon, too soon to tell, get, given the, uh, what they're doing on the ground right now, whether that's going to have an effect one way or the other uh, on getting those hostages relief. And as for the military aid, we've been nothing but concrete and nothing but clear. We're going to continue to make sure that, uh, that Israel has the tools and the capabilities, the weapons that they need, the munitions they need to continue to prosecute this fight against Hamas terrorists who killed 14, slaughtered 1,400 people all in a ba basically a single day. I also want to ask you about the U.S. retaliatory strikes carried out in eastern Syria against facilities associated with Iranian-backed militant groups believed to be responsible for more than a dozen rocket and drone attacks that injured some 21 service members. How will the administration ensure that the strikes won't further inflame tensions with Iran or in the region uh, as the U.S. is really seeking to contain this Israel-Hamas war? We're going to do what we have to do to protect our troops and our facilities. Uh, we suffered nearly, well, well, I guess actually over the course of the several days, 20-some-odd rocket attacks. Uh, and our response last night was direct, 
right to the Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard Corps uh, because they're the ones supporting these militia groups who are firing these rockets. And we hit targets uh, that we know will degrade their ability to continue to support these militia groups. So uh, the IRGC and Iran, they have a choice to make. We don't want to escalate. We don't want conflict with Iran. Secretary Austin made that clear in his statement last night. But we will protect our troops. We will protect our legitimate mission on the ground in Iraq and Syria to go after ISIS. Uh, and we're going to continue to make sure we have the capabilities to do both. The intention of those strikes, was it to kill Iranian-backed militants or was it to destroy their facilities? Two purposes. One, to go after uh, some of their ammo and weapon storage, the, the kinds of things, the depots, uh, those two places uh, that were they were using to supply these these militia groups, so degrading their military capability in Syria, and two, to deter any future rocket attacks against our troops and facilities, to make a send, send a strong signal, a clear signal, uh, to the IRGC that enough is enough. It's got to stop. National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby. Thank you, Admiral. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Good to be with you.